the Atari Lynx 2 still looks great today. Its colour screen was pioneering in the early 90s, but the technology hasn't aged well. Not only do the screens feel very difficult to use today, they also commonly develop this issue. Missing horizontal lines. It's a real shame because the Lynx is, in my opinion, a really underrated handheld with some superb titles. I'm planning to replace this screen with a modern updated LCD and as such I'm refurbishing this unit in preparation. But during these works I noticed something odd. The missing lines flicker in and out of existence. I found this quite strange. I wondered if this might be due to failing electrolytic capacitors in the unit. Lots of retro with failing caps can spring to life after being left on for a while and fall back to a failed state after prolonged power off. After about 11 minutes we're down to one single line missing with the second line flickering in and out. At that point I thought, let's do an experiment. We're going to recap this Atari Lynx Model 2 and see if it makes any difference to the screen. If you're lucky enough to have rubber grips still on your Lynx 2, you'll need to gently pull them off. The grips are usually quite hard to remove. This one was even harder to remove because someone had glued it down in the past. It also looks like someone had tried to prise it off before me. Grabbing my tool, it's time for some quick screwing action. There is a fifth screw hiding in the battery compartment. Weirdly, the Lynx doesn't want to come apart. Usually they come to pieces really easily. Then I realise that I've left the cart in. Numpty. We can set the back of the console safely aside. And gently lift up the board to remove the battery compartment from the battery contacts. Now is a really good time to clean the contacts if they're dirty or have any battery leakage. There are four cables to disconnect. The screen ribbon cable is in a socket with a collar release. The controls cable is in a friction fit socket so we'll need a bit of gentle force. The speaker and backlight connectors are the common locking notch kind and easy to remove. Now the board is free. A quick count up shows no less than 16 capacitors are replaced. And a close up board inspection doesn't show any sign of capacitor leakage or swelling. I won't film the entire removal and recapping process because that would be boring to watch. These are coming out really easily. Ha! 
having a desoldering gun makes this kind of task a lot less painful. Having taken out two of the larger capacitors and two of the smaller capacitors, I thought we'd have a quick check with the ESR meter. This one's okay. It's not the freshest cap in the land, but not going to be causing any problems. The other large capacitor is also okay. but both of the smaller capacitors show quite high ESR, almost two ohms in both cases. So, worth swapping those out regardless then. Let's put this away and crack on with desoldering the rest of these vintage capacitors. With all the capacitors removed, it's time to put the fresh new ones in their place. We'll need some cotton buds. Liquid flux can come in handy too. My spray bottle of isopropyl alcohol for cleaning the board. And with a lovely array of fresh young capacitors eager to get to work, it's time to clean the board down with some IPA. Then I'm simply rubbing the work area with a cotton bud to remove any dirt buildup. Even that small area was quite dirty. The first capacitor is ready to go in. Observing the polarity, we push the capacitor into place. And I bring my general purpose soldering iron into play. The solder we'll be using is leaded, as Atari would have used in the Lynx originally. And my soldering tip cleaner is the wire wall variety. I don't use wet sponges. With the soldering iron at proper temperature, I like to give it a clean. And then apply a blob of fresh protective solder to the tip to stop it oxidizing in the stand. A little bit of liquid flux will help the solder take better. And I often use it even on through-hole components with flux core solder. With the tip of the iron angled so that the solder pad and component lead are heated at the same time, we solder the first capacitor into place. The component legs are then trimmed with side cutters. The result is a pretty good finish. With the capacitor itself sitting nicely flush to the board. Well, it's time to install the remaining 15 capacitors. But don't worry, I won't make you watch them all. Well, I've connected the board back up to the screen, speaker and controls. You can see all the new capacitors installed inside. It was a fairly easy job. 
I'm not going to put it all back together, but I have attached the power supply ready to test whether recapping has fixed this screen. The moment of truth. And the answer is no, it made no difference. But the lines do seem to disappear a bit faster. Let's leave this on, out of curiosity. I'll speed up the footage. It's really interesting to see it play back at this speed. It makes me wonder if the faulty matrix works better when warm, so I'm turning up the brightness on the backlight. At about eight minutes, we're down to a single line again. And you can see that that's trying hard to clear. Then at a shade over nine minutes, the screen is totally line free. It's not a fix, but it's certainly interesting to see this happen. I've taken a look inside the actual flat screen and there's no use of serviceable parts, so I'm convinced that these are now actually beyond repair. We'll be replacing this screen with a modern upgrade in the next episode. Join me to see this Lynx 2 get a new lease of life. A facelift, if you like. Well, it's time to put this Lynx away and get it ready for its operation in the morning. But before we do that, let's have a quick game of Blue Lightning. I feel the need, the need for speed. A big, big thank you to all my awesome patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to help fund future videos, please visit the link on screen to see the perks and whatnot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Maybe watch some of these other videos. Bye.